like this Cause you're my little lady, lady, lady love me Lady, lady love me, love me, love me lady I want to get lazy Close all the curtains, pretend like there's no world outside But like a ukulele, mama made a baby I really don't mind the practice Cause you're my little lady, lady, lady Love me, love me, love me, lady I want to get lazy Close all the curtains Pretend like there's No world outside When the whole world fits Inside of your arms Do you really need to pay attention To the alarm Wake up slow oh, oh. Wake up slow You hardly even notice When I try to show you The song is meant to keep you From doing what you're supposed to From waking up too early Maybe we can sleep in Make you banana pancakes Pretend like it's the weekend So about two months back, I was looking for some open mic opportunities in the area, and I found one in Maynard called Serendipity on the corner of Main Street. And I signed up, and when I got there, I found out I was the only one on the list. And they said, well, we have three hours. Do you think you can just fill that time? So I said, all right, you got to sweeten the deal a little. So they said, oh, and you get free coffee. So I said, sold. So I did it. So I played my three songs, and they went great. People loved it. And I didn't know what to fill it with, so I just started playing jazz, and I played some classical, and I played some rock, and I just went up and down the keyboard. And at the end, this woman came up to me, and she said, you know, did you make that music yourself? And I said, yeah, I did. And she said, my son would absolutely love that. Do you think I could take those note sheets? And I showed it, and they're just some lyrics. And she was like, oh, how'd you do that? And I said, well, it's improv. She said, well, what is improv? So improv is making music on the spot, without any notes, and that's what I did. But there was a time about four years back where I did play notes, and that's when I took piano lessons with my piano teacher named Jenny, and Jenny was great. She taught me almost everything. She taught me the basics and then some, and she also inspired me to sing, because at every one of my concerts, she said, if you want to perform, you have to sing. And the first couple times, it was really nerve-wracking, you know, like sweaty palms, you're shaking. And it got better over time. Uh, it just comes with practice. But we kind of butted heads because she's a very traditional piano player. She likes to read notes. She was trained classically. And personally, I didn't like to read notes. I liked to go off the script a little bit. So for example, if I'm playing the traditional Ode to Joy, it goes something like, And that bored me, that I, I could fall asleep listening to that. So I would make it my own when we're playing piano, and I'm running the chorus, she loves it, and then if you're going like. And then she'd go, no, that is wrong. Jameson, do it again, but do it right. And that's where we butted heads. So we found the median, and she so graciously gave me four measures where I could play whatever I wanted. But I was kind of, I was like, exactly, I was like a peacock. I wanted to fly. Um, so eventually, four years later, I, uh, I left. And you know, after being with her for four or five years, you develop a relationship with her. I knew her kids well. Her husband made me great lattes. So I do miss that. Um, but when we, quote unquote, broke up, it was one of those, it's not you, it's me things. And 
after that, most people would say, oh no, my son doesn't play an instrument anymore. It's going to collect dust in the corner. But instead, I had all this musical freedom, and I actually used that to inspire me. Um, I had so much freedom, I could play for hours, and that's actually what I did. So I learned all the scales, the C major, the D, you know, you name it, I, I learned it. And eventually, I started listening to songs on the radio, and I realized almost all music is just four chords. All the pop music you hear today is simply four chords. And I learned the chords eventually just by listening to it and say, all right, that's on the C major scale, I can play that. And so I eventually started doing covers. And what I just played to begin with was a song by Jack Johnson called Banana Pancakes. But I make it my own a little bit by improvising. And I find the median between their song and my own. And so I created a method, which is I take the place of the bass guitar in a song by using my left hand, which is playing the four chords. So in that song, Banana Pancakes, it goes. And then my right hand has complete freedom of that scale. So if the traditional is just. I would spice it up a little bit, add some extra notes, go up and down the scales, and it becomes a lot more interesting. I'd say also for the listener, it, uh, it keeps you guessing, and that's a good quality. So, for example, that song, you can spice it up by adding, let's say, and What's great about not having a teacher is there's no risk, but there's high reward. Uh, there's no one to discipline me and say, I want you to practice this much for this long, and I want you to play this song. I made my own rules, and that's kind of what motivated me to keep playing, because I had all this freedom. And with over 500 sounds on the piano, for example, if I go like this, I go from piano to a musette. Like, what even is a musette? I could, I, I could do this for hours, and there's also little beats I could add, and that, it just kept me going. And eventually, I transitioned from the piano to GarageBand, which is a music application on your computer where you make layers and add instruments, and I started making all different types of music. I would add different beats, and I could do that for hours. And Eventually, I started thinking, well, why do people like music? You hear all these pop songs, and they all sound so similar, and so why do we like them? And I came to a conclusion that we don't like change. We're kind of in this pop generation where we like lots of bass and electric guitar and heavy beats. <laughs> but if you think about it, the generation before, we liked this disco tech, and then in the 80s, even more disco, and then 70s, it goes back. And so someone has to change it up to go on to the next generation. For example, the 90s, when we were in this little pop craze, Nirvana comes out. And no one expected Nirvana. You had like this gritty guitar and like this type of singing. And people didn't like it. People couldn't get behind that. They, they couldn't really embrace the music. And then five years down the road, people start copying it. And people look back at Nirvana and say, wow, they started this, this whole new generation of music. And I'm not saying I'm going to be the change, but I would always like to try and go off the script a little bit. And hopefully someone will maybe one day say, you know what, I like that. I'm going to copy that. And then it's just a chain reaction. And so I also, we're diverging a little bit, I, uh, I also made my own lyrics. And that was a big step, and I never thought I'd do it. But I went to creative writing class in junior year. And we went into a unit on poetry. And I found out I'm not so bad at poetry. And I saw the correlation between poetry and songwriting. And all it is is putting music behind poetry. And with that, I started doing that. And I found out I can write music. And it's really not that hard. It just takes practice. And without taking these risks, I never would have discovered these talents. And so, with all of these talents put together, I'm now going to make a song on the spot for you guys. So, I need a place, 
in an action. If anyone has any options, just throw your hand up. Yes. Wayland High School. All right, and now I need an action. All right, running. Great. <laughs> I'm late to class. I only got five minutes. I'm at Dunkin' Donuts. How am I gonna get back? I have no car. I don't have a license. I better start running. I better start running. So I make it to class with my decaf macchiato. Has some chocolate at the bottom and you decaffeinato. She says, why are you late? I say, I had to run to Duncan. She said, I know priorities. I got priorities, you're always running, running to class But I would do anything for that, for that Dunkin' at Wayland High School I'm in the gym and I am Dunkin' Nets and I am owning the three ball And I am hitting the three shots I'm always running, running to class I never make it on time I got priorities I got a whole group of friends I got a whole lot of You see, that's the good thing about uh, making your own music is if you make a mistake and you run out of ideas there's no one to say, do it again So I just ran out of rhymes So we're going to do it again I go into the media center It says no running But I'm late to class What do I do? I take the risk I run through the media center Nobody saw me, I think But third block comes around Mr. Dollarman says Will you come to the main office And I'm getting ready Sweaty, my pumps are going off the charts So I get there and I got two demerits What do I do? I go to restricted study When I said I would go to lunch with my friends 